Charles Raymond Starkweather was an American spree killer who murdered 11 people in Nebraska and Wyoming between December 1957 and January 1958, when he was 19 years old. He killed 10 of his victims between January 21 and January 29, 1958, the date of his arrest. During his spree in 1958, Starkweather was accompanied by his 14-year-old girlfriend, Carol Ann Fugati. Both Starkweather and Fugati were convicted on charges for their parts in the homicides, Starkweather was sentenced to death and executed 17 months after the events. Fugati served 17 years in prison, gaining release in 1976. Starkweather's execution by electric chair in 1959 was the last execution in Nebraska until 1994. The Starkweather case has been continuously studied by criminologists and psychologists analyzed as a case study for spree killers in an attempt to understand their motivations and precipitating factors. It also became notorious as one of the earlier crime scandals that reached national prominence, much like the kidnapping of Charles Lindbergh's son with the media outlets covering the case at the time covering openly condemning Starkweather. Charles Starkweather was born in Lincoln, Nebraska, the third of seven children of Guy and Helen Starkweather. The Starkweathers were a working-class family. His father, Guy, was a mild-mannered carpenter who was often unemployed, due to suffering rheumatoid arthritis in his hands. During Guy's periods of unemployment, Helen supplemented the family's income working as a waitress. Starkweather attended Saratoga Elementary School, Irving Junior High School, and Lincoln High School. In contrast to his family life, Starkweather later recalled nothing positive of his time at school. He was born with genuverum, a mild birth defect that caused his legs to be misshapen. He also suffered from a speech impediment, which led to constant teasing by classmates. As he grew older and stronger, the only subject which Starkweather excelled at was gym, where he found a physical outlet for his rage against those who bullied him. Starkweather then began to bully those who had once picked on him. Eventually he felt rage against anyone he disliked. In this period as a young teenager, Starkweather went from being one of the most well-behaved teenagers in the community to one of the most troubled. His high school friend Bob Von Bush would later recall, He could be the kindest person you've ever seen. He'd do anything for you if he liked you. He was a hell of a lot of fun to be around, too. Everything was just one big joke to him. But he had this other side. He could be mean as hell, cruel. If he saw some poor guy on the street who was bigger than he was, better looking, or better dressed, he'd try to take the poor bastard down to his size. By the time Starkweather dropped out of school, his parents and family were reportedly afraid of him due to his physically violent outbursts. In 1956, the 18 year old Starkweather was introduced to 13 year old Carol Ann Fugati, though her older sister, Barbara, who was dating Starkweather's friend, Bob Von Bush. Starkweather had dropped out of Lincoln High School in his senior year and was working at a Western Union newspaper warehouse. He sought employment there because the warehouse was located near Whittier Junior High School in Lincoln, where Fugati was a student. Given his working schedule, Starkweather began to visit Carol and Fugati every day after school. Starkweather taught Fugati how to drive, and one day she crashed his 1949 Ford into another car. However, Starkweather's father Guy was the registered owner of the vehicle. He paid the damages but argued with his son about it, and his having let his unlicensed girlfriend drive. Refusing to condone his son's behavior, Guy banished Starkweather from the family home. The young man quit his job at the warehouse and became a garbage collector for minimum wage. He began developing a nihilistic worldview, believing that his current situation was the final determinant of how he would live the rest of his life. While striving only to satisfy his biological needs and acquire power over others, he used his time on the garbage route to begin plotting bank robberies. He settled on a personal philosophy by which he lived the remainder of his time, dead people are all on the same level. Late on November 30, 1957, Starkweather became angry at Robert Colvert, a service station attendant in Lincoln, for refusing to sell him a stuffed animal on credit. 
he returned several times during the night to purchase small items, until finally, brandishing a shotgun, he forced Culvert to give him $100 from the till. He drove Culvert to a remote area, where they struggled over the gun, injuring Culvert before Starkweather killed him with several shots. On January 21, 1958, Starkweather went to Fugate's home to get his girlfriend. Fugate's mother and stepfather, Velda and Marion Bartlett, told him to stay away. He fatally shot them, then strangled and stabbed to death their two-year-old daughter Betty Jean. He hid the bodies behind the house. Starkweather later said that Carol was there the entire time, but she said that when she arrived home, Starkweather met her with a gun and said that her family was being held hostage. She said Starkweather told her that if she cooperated with him, her family would be safe, otherwise, they would be killed. The pair remained in the house until shortly before the police, alerted by Fugate's suspicious grandmother, arrived on January 27. Starkweather and Fugate drove to the farmhouse of 70-year-old August Meyer, one of her family's friends who lived in Bennett, Nebraska. Starkweather killed him with a shotgun blast to the head. He also killed Meyer's dog. Fleeing the area, the pair drove their car into mud and abandoned the vehicle. When Robert Jensen and Carol King, two local teenagers, stopped to give them a ride, Starkweather forced them to drive back to an abandoned storm cellar in Bennett. He shot Jensen in the back of the head. He attempted to sexual abuse King, but was unable to do so. He became angry with her and fatally shot her as well. Starkweather later admitted shooting Jensen, but claimed that Fugati shot King. Fugati said she had stayed in the car the entire time. The two fled Bennett in Jensen's car. Starkweather and Fugati drove to a wealthy section of Lincoln, where they entered the home of industrialist C. Lauer Ward and his wife Clara. Starkweather stabbed their maid Lillian Fenkel to death, then waited for Lauer and Clara to return home. Starkweather killed the family dog by breaking its neck, to keep it from alerting the wards. Clara arrived first alone, and was also stabbed to death. Starkweather later admitted to having thrown a knife at Clara, but insisted that Fugati had stabbed her numerous times, killing her. When Lauer Ward returned home that evening, Starkweather shot and killed him. Starkweather and Fugati filled Ward's black 1956 Packard with stolen jewelry from the house and fled Nebraska. The murders of the Wards and Fenkel caused an uproar within Lancaster County. Law enforcement agencies in the region sent their officers on a house-to-house -house search for the perpetrators. Governor Victor Emanuel Anderson contacted the Nebraska National Guard, and the Lincoln chief of police called for a block-by-block -block search of that city. After several sightings of Starkweather and Fugati were reported, the Lincoln Police Department was accused of incompetence for being unable to capture the pair. Needing a new car because of Ward's Packard having been identified, the couple came upon traveling salesman Merle Collison sleeping in his Buick along the highway outside Douglas, Wyoming. After Collison was awakened, he was fatally shot. Starkweather later accused Fugati of performing a coup de grace after his shotgun jammed. Starkweather claimed Fugati was the most trigger-happy person he had ever met. Fugati denied ever having killed anyone. The salesman's car had a parking brake, which was something new to Starkweather. While he attempted to drive away, the car stalled because the brake had not been released. He tried to restart the engine, and a passing motorist, geologist Joe Sprinkle, stopped to help. Starkweather threatened him with the rifle, and an altercation ensued. At that moment, Natrona County Sheriff's Deputy William Romer arrived on the scene. Fugati ran to him, yelling something to the effect of, It's Starkweather. He's going to kill me. Starkweather drove off and was involved in a car chase with three officers, exceeding speeds of 100 miles per hour. A bullet fired by Sheriff Earl Heflin shattered the windshield and flying glass cut Starkweather deep enough to cause bleeding. He stopped and surrendered. Converse County Sheriff Earl Heflin said, he thought he was bleeding to death. That's why he stopped. That's the kind of yellow son of a bee he is. Starkweather chose to be extradited from Wyoming to Nebraska. He and Fugati arrived there in late January 1958. He believed that either state would have executed him. 
He was not aware, however, that Millward Simpson Wyoming's governor at the time, opposed the death penalty. Starkweather first said that he had kidnapped Fugati and that she had nothing to do with the murders. However, he changed his story several times. He testified against her at her trial, saying that she was a willing participant. Fugati has always maintained that Starkweather was holding her hostage by threatening to kill her family, claiming she was unaware they were already dead. Judge Harry A. Spencer did not believe Fugati was held hostage by Starkweather, as he determined she had had numerous opportunities to escape. When Starkweather was first taken to the Nebraska penitentiary after his trial, he said that he believed that he was supposed to die. He said if he was to be executed, then Fugati should be also. Starkweather was convicted for the murder of Jensen, the only murder for which he was tried. On May 23, 1958, he was sentenced to death, and Starkweather was executed in the electric chair at the Nebraska State Penitentiary in Lincoln, Nebraska, at 12.04 a.m. on June 25, 1959. Starkweather gave no last words but in a letter from prison to his parents, wrote but dad I'm not real sorry for what I did cause for the first time me and Carol have more fun, he was reportedly indifferent about his impending death and had resigned to his fate. Following the execution, Starkweather was buried in Wyuka Cemetery in Lincoln, as are five of his victims, including Mr. and Mrs. Carl Ward. Fugati was convicted as an accomplice and received a life sentence on November 21, 1958. She was paroled in June 1976 after serving 17 and a half years at the Nebraska Correctional Center for Women in York, Nebraska. She settled in Lansing, Michigan.